Hello, this is VG Shanmugapriya. Today we will be seeing about dynamic programming algorithm for pairwise sequence alignments. Dynamic programming is an optimal alignment algorithm for pairwise sequence alignment. Here, all possible alignments are tried to find out the highest scoring alignment. The dynamic programming algorithm used for global alignment of sequences is needleman Unch algorithm and for local alignment it is Smith-Waterman algorithm. These are the steps which needs to be carried out for global alignment of sequences using needleman Unch algorithm. We can run through these steps with an example. Now here two sequences are given to perform global alignment using dynamic programming and the scores given are starting score of 0, match 2, mismatch minus 1 and gap is minus 2. First thing is we need to construct a matrix Fij indexed with i and j, one index for each sequence in the x and y direction. In the first place a gap is included and then the sequences are written. Same way here. Next the position of the sequences has to be marked. Begin the matrix by initializing F00 as 0. Next step is the sequences has to be aligned with this gap position. For this gap to sequence alignment, the formula to be applied is this. It indicates that when we move to each box, it will be taken as summation of scores. As the gap penalty score is minus 2, the first sequence when aligned with the gap, it will be having minus 2. Similarly, the first sequence here with the gap is minus 2. Next, when we move over to each box, it will be a summation of the value in the previous box plus minus 2. So it will be an increment of minus 2 in each box. Really for the y axis here. If suppose the gap penalty score is minus 1, we will have here minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and the same over here. As the value from each box is derived from the score from the previous box, a pointer is placed indicating from which box it is derived. Next all these boxes has to be filled starting from this left hand side corner box. To fill these boxes, we need to follow this formula. Here, to fill each box or cell in the matrix, these three formulas has to be calculated and whichever is maximum has to be considered to fill the box. As we know, Fij is the row and the column position in the matrix and score of Xiyj is the match or the mismatch score of the residues being aligned and D is the gap penalty score, left side to it. So as per the formula, value from the diagonal box has to be added with the score of the residues being aligned. It might be a match score or a mismatch score. As seen here, to the value of these two boxes, a gap penalty should be added. So once this calculation is done, the maximum value obtained will be taken as the value of this box. And a pointer will be placed from which box the value is derived. So this equation is repeatedly applied to fill all the cells in the matrix. While filling a pointer is kept for each box back from which that Fij was derived. Now let's see how to fill this first box. The position is I1 and J1. So this is the closer look of the box. Now here I is 1 and J is 1. According to this formula in place of I and J 1 will be taken and the positions will be marked down. So here the, these are the positions derived. Here to know the value of F00 need to go to this position 00. So here the value is 0. So it is written over here. Similarly F10 is F10. So minus 2. Similarly F01 is F01 minus 2. So minus 2 is written over here. Next is the score for aligning x i n y j which is again this one 1 and 1 so here score for aligning g and g match score match score we know it is 2 so we write here as 2 again here d represents gap penalty which is minus 2 so here we have taken minus 2 here so adding all these values the values are given over here of which maximum is 2 hence 2 will be placed over here and this value we have got from the diagonal box that is from the first step. Hence the pointer will be placed from this box. So now we know that we need to add the match score or the mismatch score along with the value of this box. And for these two boxes need to add the gap penalties. So directly we can fill the box. So to fill the next box here what we do is value of the diagonal box plus 
match score of this one so here we have g and a so g and a is a mismatch so we have mismatch score of minus 1 so here the total will be minus 3 and to these two boxes adding the gap penalty minus 2 we get these values of which 0 is maximum and this value has come from this box hence place the pointer from this box and write the value similarly filling this box is shown over here the next box there can be instance where you get maximum value from two boxes so pointer will be placed from two boxes it is likely that sometimes you get the same value in all three boxes so you need to place the pointer according to that so here an example is shown where you get two arrows so this is the matrix which is fully filled so the next step is to trace back the path from the last box here so from the last box we need to see from where this value was derived based on the pointer and we need to trace back the path like 5, 3, 4 the pointers. So to make it easy the arrow is kept in the, in the opposite direction. So this is how the arrow is placed now. So the path is traced back from where the value has been obtained. So there are chances that you get more than a single path. So here we have two paths. So next thing is based on this path we need to align the sequences. Based on the direction of arrow the alignment can be made. Here if it is a diagonal arrow then residue in sequence 1 will be aligned with residue in sequence 2. And if it is an horizontal arrow the residue in sequence 1 will be aligned with gap in sequence 2. If it is a vertical arrow a residue in sequence 2 will be aligned with gap in the sequence 1. So with this rule let's see the path over here here we have a diagonal arrow so g will be aligned with g next here let's follow the first path here so next what we have is an horizontal arrow so according to the rule sequence 1 residue of sequence 1 will be aligned with a gap in the sequence 2 next what we have is we have a diagonal arrow so a and a will be aligned diagonal arrow t and t will be aligned and here again we have a diagonal value hence t and a will be aligned and finally c and c will be aligned next based on the second path let's align the sequence here we have a diagonal arrow so g will be aligned with g and here again a will be aligned with a and here, here again we have an horizontal arrow which tells that a residue in sequence 1 will be aligned with the gap in sequence 2 again we have diagonal arrows so all these sequences will be aligned to check whether both are optimal alignments let's score them again so based on the scores what we already have we will be scoring the alignment so here we can see the total score from both the alignments are equal to the score in the last box or cell of the matrix hence it is proven that both are optimal alignments now let's see about local alignment it is the smith waterman algorithm which is engaged it follows the same strategy like a global alignment algorithm but here it differs in two main things. One is while filling the matrix no negative values are allowed and hence the lowest allowable value in any of the cell is 0. In the formula 0 is included here. If all the calculations give a negative value then we have to consider 0 as the maximum one. And next thing is during backtracking of the path we need to start from the box which is having the highest value and extend up to the first 0 value. Let's see the same example what we have used for global alignment. So you can see in this matrix which is filled there are no negative values only positive values and 0 are there. So this is the same matrix with the pointers added. So after backtracking and then deriving the path so this is the path. According to this path we get a sequence alignment like this. Kindly note as this is the cell which is having maximum value backtracking was done from here. The total score of the alignment is equal to the value in the box from where we started. So, hence it is known that it is an optimal local alignment. Here as the sequences are of very short length and are similar we got the same alignment as that of the global alignment. In global we got two paths whereas in local it is only a single path. So let me explain with an other example. Now let us see local alignment with these two sequences and keeping the scores the same as that of the previous one. Here after filling the matrix, keeping the pointers, finally selecting the box which has highest value, backtrack was done and then finally this path is got. Now according to this one, 
when the sequences are aligned they have to be aligned like this now, now you can see that only a small portion of the sequences are aligned so this you call it as local alignment so we have now seen how to do global alignment with needleman unch algorithm and local alignment with smith waterman algorithm also in my next video i'll be showing how to do overlapping of sequences with dynamic programming or you call it as end alignment and is also called as semi global alignment hope you like this video kindly subscribe thank you